Colt here. New, new VPT member ready to get after the 4% club. We're excited to have her. Now, uh, I'll, I'll have to tell on, on Lori a little bit because um, oh, no. <laughs> you know, I've, I've known Lori quite a while because we, we both share uh, a love for softball. And she has been a, a umpire, a longtime umpire um, in, in the softball world here in our community for a long time. She's, she's been a part of the ASA movement with um, helping kids get signed up for our tribe or club programs and has, has done a ton for the softball community. Um, not just umpiring, but also around because she had uh, quite a few girls that enjoyed softball. I was able to coach one of them and they were fantastic softball players. So all in all, um, I'm, I'm excited to work with, with Lori at this capacity as well, because, you know, it's, uh, it's been enjoyable to coach her daughters and uh, I coached with her, her middle daughter. And just for her to be on the field all the time, umpiring. So I don't know if she always shares that because sometimes we don't always agree with her calls. But <laughs> but um, th the respect is 100% there. That's for sure. So mm -hmm. so welcome. Thank you. Was that a big enough intro or should I oh, keep going? That's plenty, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We got uh, Linda. Nice. Linda made it on. Yes, yes. Good. Lisa. Lisa. Hello. Over the other side of the the state still kicking butt do you have much snow over there uh not i know mostly melted but we had snow for a week more than a week in fact we had snow a couple days ago again so oh. not not what we're no, normally supposed to have in a state cold all week, so it was bad let me, let, me help, let me help mute there but not as bad as you as not as cold as you guys had it <laughs> yeah we've been uh We've been getting hammered. And I think today, if I, if I remember right, we're supposed to get even more today. Is that, yeah. I, I don't know when that's starting, but um, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to get more today. And then I think I saw last night, uh, Thursday and Friday, possibly. Um, so, or Friday, Saturday, one of those two, I can't remember, but yeah. Well, good to see your face again, 2022. Happy New Year. So Cindy, yes, good to see Cindy. Cindy has already mentioned how she's given up drinking this uh, this year. Um, <laughs> I think oh. I missed. Oh, oh, I must have mis misread that. Oh, that's next. Yeah, I, that's twenty twenty three. Was that in one of your emails? I just forgot to read. Or oh, I I must uh, I must have misread that one. So but I am. Less. <laughs> well, it's only because we keep harassing you. You know, it's that peer pressure. Oh, no, I'm just getting too cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be it too. So, well, it's good to see you anyways. I see you, you got your good sense of humor still with you. So the, the break didn't uh, spoil any of that. So I like to see it. Nope. And I inherited a dog. So I may have to jet and see what he's getting okay. into. Well, good deal. What kind? Uh, German Shepherd. Come here, Echo. Come here. Yeah, look good. Lori, welcome, welcome. Uh, how was the break for you and, and kind of getting going with your VPT program? So like I mentioned, this is your first 4% club. How how has the break been? Are you, are you still going back to teaching? Um, I was signed up to substitute today, but then they didn't need me after all. So it's just um, occasionally. Okay. Good. It's easier to not teach and keep up with this than to teach and do this. <laughs> yeah. No, nope, I hear you. And um, Taji, who I coached, I believe she's getting married this summer. Is that correct? Yes. So congrats. Yeah. She was Taji. up for Christmas with her fiance. So that was good. Yeah. Well, I'll just let you know, team, that um, her daughter Taji at some point will be working with us. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Taji fully knows it yet, but, you know. Um, I, I put things out in the universe and I just keep willing them to happen. And I see Taji eventually working with us at some point. So a fantastic. They are um, in the Redmond, Oregon area. And they, he's from Oregon, but farther south and closer to the coast. But he loves it up here. Um, he actually applied for a job up here when he was here on the Christmas break. So if they ever do get moved up here, I'm sure she'll be looking for it. Yep. I, I'm just going to will it to happen. So uh, good. Jill, welcome, welcome. Well, let's see if I can unmute you there. Let's see how that works. Mute. 
I'm good. How'd the break treat you? It was good. Um, basketball and family. And so, yeah, it was all right. Cold bus rides, though. We had that really cold snap last week, and I got to ride a bus three days. So, yeah. not fun. Yeah. We had good experience playing ball, though. Yeah, no, it was fun to watch them over the break. That's for sure. So that's good. Well, thank you. Thank yep. you. Kelly, I see you just jumped on. Good. How's the break for you? Good. Busy, cold, snowy, lots of family. It's fun. That's good. All right. Uh, do you have furniture in front of you yet? Um, well, the good news <laughs> is everything's dry except for one little spot. So okay. Yeah. Well, for, for those of you that don't know, Kelly's in the basement over at the main building. And on Monday, uh, Mackenzie came down the stairs and there was standing water all the way to the back of the building. So right out in front of Kelly's office against the wall, a pipe broke and just started flooding water um, all out in there. So we've got uh, some good people that that came in and started taking taking care of it and rocking it out. And it's it's looking pretty good for, for right now. So yeah, so adventures, ventures never end. And Kathy, Kathy, last one I, I got here at the bottom. So uh, if I think you're unmuted, can you hear us? I, I can hear you, but I can't, I don't see me, but I see you. Okay. Yeah, I can't see either. And I believe if I hit this button, it's, and then I go ask to start video, it should pop up on your screen. And if you start hit that, my, yeah, start yep. my video. Yep. You hit that button and poof, there okay. you are like magic. There I am. Okay. How was the break for you? It was good. It was good. Um, um, doing, uh, better with my, my senior. Um, and so, you know, this week anyway. <laughs> good. You mentioned, uh, I, I saw you in the gym earlier. You mentioned shoveling a little snow. Oh yes. Well, I have animals and you have to shovel out so they can get to water. So. Yeah. You know, it's just a, a daily thing right now. <laughs> okay. Well, good, good job team. No, it's good to see. You. I mean, obviously break, it's been a, a couple of weeks since we had the 4% club and uh, you know, that Christmas new year's time is always interesting because a lot of, a lot of people are coming in, different things are going on, Christmas parties, you know, company stuff, snow, it just seems like always a hectic time. And once you get through new year's and you get into that next week, it's like, it just kind of levels out and you can get back to business. So no, it's good to, good to get the, the new year fired, fired off, ready to go. So, uh, I thought this 4% would be perfect to hit on, um, new year's resolutions that you can actually keep. Now I'm not a huge new year's resolution guy. I like to set goals at the beginning of the year. I think it's a great time to start setting business, personal, um, health, different fitness goals. I love that because it's kind of a fresh start. You came off of, um, you know, a, a holiday where it's not always easy to stay consistent. You have family, friends that are coming in. You've got uh, all these different distractions. So it's easy to get, uh, it's easy to get off track. It, 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 it really is. But the new year, it's like this week, it just kind of resets. And now it's your oyster. You can make it whatever you want. So uh, again, I like to sit down. My wife gives, gets me every year a planner that I keep with me all year. So uh, every year she gets me a, a brand new one of these that just goes through um, the, the full year. And I like to kind of set out different personal um, relationship, business, um, uh, fitness, different goals, because it's fun for me being a linear person that in July, August, September to look back on those goals and go, oh, wow, I actually made those. I hit those. Look at this. I can mark them off. And then it still gives me time to still try and meet them too. So for, for my linear brain, I love it. Um, and that's kind of what the new year starts for me. But it, for a lot of people, new year's is a time for resolutions. It's a time for uh, a fresh start. And that's obvious because you get the new year. So it's a new calendar. It's fresh in your mind. But what do we know about res res resolutions? Um, by week two, possibly all the way to February, a lot of people have quit them. They're, they're done. And you know, from being in the virtual personal training program, that what we try and build here is that habit. It's about creating that consistency, creating that habit to where it becomes just a part of, of, of who you are and what you're doing. And the fact that you're on the 4% club on a Wednesday at 11 o'clock tells me that you've built the habit. 
So for individuals like yourself, resolutions are being made. They're being hit. Some of you like uh, Peggy, who's uh, coming up on, she's gone a year in the VPT program. So congratulations to Peggy for, for uh, hitting the year and then coming back again. So, so she resubscribed and she's, she's going for year number two. So you, you look at individuals, what excites me, what, what makes me uh, happy about the program we're building is, is creating that longevity. Because as we know with resolutions, it can be a one hitter. All of a sudden, you're, uh, you know, it only takes a little bit of bump and you're off track and, and you're in the third week of January and you're still not hitting your resolution. So, uh, you know, where I want to hit today is, is going through about 20 uh, resolutions that you can actually start implementing. So what I want for you to do today is I'm really looking for you to pick out kind of your top eight. So when I go through these, I'm going to go over 20 of them today. And about halfway through, I'm going to uh, break out. I'm just going to get your, your top two. And then when we get through all of these, I want you to give me kind of your top five. Um, so I want you to write down eight, but then we'll review your top five just time-wise of ones that stand out to you that you're going to try and implement this year. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do them, but it just gives you kind of a springboard to think about um, some of these, because these are, these are varied. They're not all just related to fitness and stuff like that. So, so let's fire away. Let's, let's get into it. Uh, number one resolution that you can actually eat, uh, eat, keep, <laughs> that's a slip, eat more whole foods. So we touched last year in a 4% club and I went through some nutritional programs and I give you a tease that I'm going to go um, heavily into nutrition coming up in the next few weeks. And I'm going to get into uh, metabolic syndrome. We don't, we don't talk about it enough. And it's really um, a lot of the, the things that we, that we see from obesity to diabetes, to high blood sugar, to insulin resistance, to uh, the fatty liver disease. These are really just symptoms of a bigger problem, which is metabolic syndrome. So we're going to get onto that later. But one of the things that we can do as a resolution is to eat more whole foods. And, and one of the most easiest and most uh, sustainable ways to improve our overall health is to eat whole foods. So what really are whole foods? We're looking at anything that really isn't processed. So if you get it out of a box, it ain't a whole food. If you get out of a bag, it's usually not a whole food. We're looking at vegetables, we're looking at fruits, we're looking at nuts, we're looking at seeds, we're looking at um, whole grains, we're looking at fish, we're looking at different meats, we want uh, a food that's been untouched. If you could go out in your backyard, kill it and bring it into the house, that's probably as whole food as you can get. If you could go out to your garden and pluck it out of the garden and then put it on, on your cutting board and cut it up, it's the, the closest you can get to a whole food. So uh, it's not always easy when you've got 30 inches of snow sitting there to go grab a carrot out of the garden. So yes, we do have to go to the store and buy things, but when you buy things, try and get as, as uh, whole as you can. So untouched, unprocessed is going to be your best recipe for creating health in your life. So number one, eat more whole foods. That doesn't mean you only have to eat whole foods, but try and eat more whole foods. That's number one. Number two, sit less, move more. Sounds easy. Uh, a, a lot of individuals have said it's sedentary jobs. Um, they, they become inactive. Uh, and, and for me doing home health, I found a lot of individuals sit all day. They, you know, they, they wake up, they have breakfast, they go sit in the recliner, they watch gun smoke, they go to the bathroom a couple of times, they come back and, and, and watch the Virginian, then they have lunch, then they go back and sit. And now you're watching, you know, Walker, Texas Ranger, and then you're taking a nap and then you're having dinner and then you're going to bed at five o'clock and you keep repeating that that's inactivity. So what we want to do is try and make a resolution to, to sit less and to try and improve our mobility. What does that mean? That's different for everybody. It could be that you're an individual who likes to track steps. You want to see how many steps you can increase to. You might be an individual that says, well, I, I want to increase my cardiovascular um, tolerance. I want to go from 10 minutes to 15 minutes. You set your own goal, but the whole key is we want to just become more active. We know that the bodies are made to be active and the more active we are, it increases our health. So number two, sit less, move more. Number three, cut back on sweetened beverages. I have a general rule. I do not like to um, add any calories to 
my my drinks. So it's it's a rarity for me if I have any type of caloric uh, drink because it's too easy. Uh, you get a pop, you get a juice, you get any of those uh, it, uh, milk. It's too easy to just sip them down. So uh, when you have to actually eat a carrot and try and eat uh, 500 calories worth of carrots, holy smokes, you're going to have a bellyache because it's going to distend so much from getting so much in there. But you know, if you look at a soda, I mean, gosh, some of those sodas have 60 grams of sugar just in the soda and you don't even know it. It doesn't fill you up. It's not a, a complex carbohydrate. It has no nutritional value to it. Um, I could argue that it's actually poison, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll save that for another day. Uh, try and minimize this, the, the sweetened beverages. That's number three. Number four, this is a big one for me for this year. Get more quality sleep. So if anybody knows me, I'm an early riser. I like to burn it on both ends. Um, it is one of my weakness in my wellness spectrum is getting enough quality sleep. So I've already set the stage um, in, in my work life, in home life to, to get more quality sleep, which is um, more sleep essentially. And to make sure that I'm structuring that in for myself personally. So that's one for me, but sleep is essential for overall health. And there's a lot of links of a decrease in sleep equals increase in pain, increases in, in anxiety, increase in depression. Uh, so you start looking at some of those psychological mental health sides. You look at the physical health sides. There's a strong correlation between a decrease in sleep and your overall health. So for me, uh, I'm, I'm looking to uh, improve my health by improving my sleep this year. But what do we also know for individuals that don't get good sleep? They start relying on stimulants. Oh, I'm, I got to have coffee to get me going in the morning. I've got to drink my monster drink. I got to supplement in some way to try and keep me stimulated because I'm not getting enough sleep overall. And here's uh, the, the cliffhanger for me with more quality sleep. This is why it's a goal for me. I find that I'm missing the later parts of my day because I'm almost zombie-like because I'm too tired. And I don't want to drink a coffee or I don't want to have any of those because I don't want to, I don't want to get stimulated before I go to sleep but I'm not able to be my best self to my family, to my wife, to my kids, because I'm zombie-like after about 7.30, because I'm getting up too early. So uh, for me, again, this is, this is uh, uh, one for myself, get more quality sleep. Other ways that you can improve your sleep, minimize screen time before bed. As, um, as Cindy knows, we've talked about alcohol before bed can, can keep us awake. Same thing with caffeine before bed can keep us awake. So developing a consistent cycle is the best thing that you can do for sleep. And we've touched on it quite a few times in our 4% club, but uh, sleep overall can be modified for individuals that are having difficulty sleeps, sleeping. So if you are di having difficulty sleeping, talk to me again, and I will pull out some of our 4% uh, clubs in the past that talk about sleep. Number five, find a physical activity that you enjoy. So it's a new year, it's a new you, you can decide what you wanna do. It's a perfect opportunity to take up a new uh, physical activity. Do you wanna start a walking program, jogging program, uh, start bike riding? Um, do you want to join our aerobics class that we just started this year? <laughs> so we've got uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Fridays, we've got a, a, a beginner's aerobics class that started at five in the morning. So if anybody's interested, let me know. But we've got a uh, aerobics class that's starting. So that's another, another great opportunity. Swimming, starting a, a swimming program. So any of these are obtainable, but to push yourself out of your comfort zone is kind of the whole, the whole deal of growth. We can grow as individuals if we get uncomfortable and we're okay with failing. And then before you know it, you look back and go, wow, I've grown a ton. So find a physical activity that you enjoy is number five. Number six, take more me time and practice self-care. Now, here's one that a lot of people skimp on, um, especially if you're a female, and I'll generalize here, you tend to be a caring individual that looks after and nurtures after others. It's just biology. It's who you are. You want to care for people. You want to um, empathize with them. You want to nurture them and put them under your wing, and you, you spend a ton of energy caring for others. And what I have seen in my, my limited experience with women is they don't always take time for themselves. 
And when you don't take time for yourself, and it's hard for you to be your best self to take care of others because that's an innate natural setting for you to want to take care of others. So if you're not taking time for you, it doesn't mean that you're selfish. And that's the, what I hear a lot. Oh gosh, I feel guilty by doing something for myself. If you're not taking care of you, who's going to do it? And how do you become your best self for others if you're not taking care of you? So uh, let's get rid of the, the, the thought that you're selfish if you take care of yourself. It's not. You're now able to give the best self to others. So number six, take more me time and practice self-care. Number seven, cook more meals at home. Now, for some of you, that's not a problem. Um, that's, that's something that you probably do already. But for individuals that are juggling work, that are juggling kids, that are juggling maybe, uh, you know, Jill mentioned coaching, you know, there's a lot of different hats that you might be wearing. And with that, um, I know for ourselves, when we start getting, adding more to our lives, we find ourselves in restaurants and fast food places more often. So cooking more meals at home by planning ahead of time, taking a Saturday or Sunday, building out that, um, that uh, fridge with more whole foods by taking some time on the weekend to prepare what you're thinking you're going to be making for that day. Half of it is just preparation. If we know that when we get home, we're going to immediately make X, Y, Z, it's easier to go home and eat. But when you're sitting there going, well, I don't, we don't have any food in the fridge and I don't even know what we're going to make. Let's just grab something for everybody at this place. And then we're, we don't have to think about it anymore. So it's more of a convenience. So number seven, uh, resolution that you can keep, cook more meals at home. Number eight, resolution that you can actually uh, obtain, spend more time outside. Spending more time outdoors can improve your health, can, can relieve stress, can elevate your mood, and can even lower your blood pressure. So by making a, a new, re, new Year's resolution to spend more time outside every day, it's sustainable, and it's a healthy goal that, that benefits you and the people around you. So even though for Kathy, it's a pain in the butt to have to go pick up that shovel and, and move snow because of those animals, the best thing that she can do is keep those animals because it requires her to take care of them. And overall, spending that time outside doing a physical activity will actually help her mood, help her health, help her overall sense of, of who she is greater than the pain in the butt it is to move the snow. <laughs> and I know it sucks at times because I look out my driveway and I'm like, oh gosh, I got to or my roof this last weekend, I got to knock all my edges off because otherwise I'm going to get um, the backflow of water in, in those ice dams that are going to be created. So it's a pain. But when I get done and I'm sweating and I feel pretty good, I, I'm winning overall. It helps, it helps my well-being and my physical mood. So spend more time outside. It, it will reward you. Number nine, limit screen time. So many people de depend on their phones. They depend on computers. They, they depend on um, uh, devices for now entertainment and work. So I know for myself, I don't spend a ton of time watching TV. I don't, I don't, I, other than Yellowstone, love that show. Uh, Yellowstone's about, about the only thing that, that moves me to the television. But I know that I spend a lot of time like now on a Zoom call on my computer, on my phone. And um, that's kind of, directs my area. So by uh, reducing the amount of screen time, it has been shown to help improve depression, decrease anxiety, and um, improve the sense of loneliness. And a lot of times when we spend our time on social media and we see other people's lives and, and, and it's kind of a fake version of reality, we feel lonely and depressed because people have these great lives and we're sitting here with, you know, 30 inches of snow that we have to move and it makes you feel incomplete. And the truth is a lot of the social media is just not, it's fabrication. It's not reality. So uh, spending less time, screen time there can, whether it's TV, computer, other can, can help your overall health. And it sh is a uh, resolution that can actually be obtained. Number 10, Try meditation. So meditation is, is evidence-based evidence -based way uh, to promote mental well-being. So it can be particularly helpful for people that have anxiety and depression. So taking that time where you can turn everything off and think of if you might have anxiety yourself. And I, I know 
from anxiety, it makes your mind just run constantly. Oh, did I do this? Am I doing this enough? Am I, should I be doing this? Or, and, and to actually have to sit there in silence with your thoughts, it, some people can't do it. They can't stop the brain from twirling over and over and over and over. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, I shouldn't be taking this time to even do this meditation because I should be doing X, Y, Z. And what if, what about this? And then it's, oh, I shouldn't be taking time for myself because now I'm selfish. So it creates a cycle. So one uh, way that you can, you can help with the resolution, try meditation. Again, it's an evidence-based way to help decrease anxiety, learning to sit in your own thoughts. A lot of times we listen to the radio, we turn on a television, we, we, uh, we turn on a TV because it puts things into our brain because then we don't have to listen to what's in our head. And sometimes the scariest thing in the world is actually what's in our head. And we're looking for ways to cope with those thoughts through alcohol, uh, drugs, noise, um, uh, conflict. Just sometimes we create conflict because we don't want to hear what's in here. And it's easier to go and, and, and deal with somebody that's just egregious and it's mean because now I don't have to deal with myself. So meditation, whew, it can get real, real quick to find out how you can handle it. So number, uh, I think that's another great 4% in the future. So I'll file that one away. Number 11, rely less on convenience foods. So again, I touched on um, going to more whole foods and also eating less uh, or eating more at home. But a lot of people rely on convenience foods, uh, prepackaged foods, cookies, chips, frozen dinners, fast foods, different quick meals and snacks. So even though these items are built to be tasty, and they're available everywhere, they can be detrimental to our health overall. So uh, make a, a goal of relying less on convenience food can drive your overall health, and it's something that you can obtain. Number 12, rethink dieting. So chronic dieting is, is harmful to both your physical and mental health. Every time that you backslide in a diet, you feel like a failure. And then you feel like there's nothing that's going to work for me. And for individuals that are starting the 4% club, I hear it a lot. Well, gosh, I've tried everything in the past and nothing works. I've tried keto and intermittent fasting. I've tried all these different things and nothing works for me. And every time you fail, you feel like a failure. You feel like nothing's going to ever work for you. So part of this is rethink dieting. Uh, dieting itself, the, just the word sounds like restriction. It sounds like... Um, a task. It sounds like effort. It sounds like I can pass or fail. So instead of setting a resolution of trying to lose weight um, by using different restrictive measures or different fad diets, just try a healthier way of just changing the different foods you're eating. Just move to more whole foods and see what it does for your body. Eat less convenience foods eat more at home and see how, what it does for you. And so by rethinking dieting, it will help our own mental health too. Cause we won't feel like if I don't do X, Y, Z, then I failed. And, and a lot of health related to our personal health is just our own self guilt to feel like we can't accomplish anything that we, we fail, we're a failure. And to get through that um, is powerful. So number 12, rethink dieting. And I got one more and then I'll, I'll open it up for, for midway for our, uh, our breakout here. Number 13, go grocery shopping regularly. Now this goes to eating more at home, more of the whole foods. If you have a well-stocked pantry and a well-stocked fridge with, with healthy whole foods and you go to the grocery store often, it gets into that same cycle as where I tell you to come in here and just touch the wall. A lot of times we get so overwhelmed because we're like, geez, gosh, my workout looks so big today and I don't have time for it. And I don't know if blah, 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 how my body's going to tolerate it and it's going to be fatigued. And we try and make it as simple as we can. Just go and touch the wall. Go touch the wall at the same day, at the same time. And then if you do anything after that, it's just a bonus. But what happens when you come in here and touch the wall, you're like, well, I'm already here. I might as well do some of these. Ah, well, that doesn't feel too bad. I might as well do some of these. And before you know it, you're like, well, that was one of my best workouts. That was really good. And I thought about not even coming. And it's the same with going to the grocery store. If we can develop that same habit of just having well-stocked foods, it makes it so much easier to stay prepared at home for foods that are actually sustainable for our bodies. So number 13, 
go to the grocery store regularly. So I'm going to unmute you and just kind of give me the, the two or three that stand out to you. Kind of touch on maybe two or three of those that you're like, hey, I hadn't thought about that one. That might be a good resolution for me. And we'll start with Linda at the top. Oh, okay. Um, eating more whole foods. I've started on that for a while and good. I'm going to continue with, I'm doing keto, but it's more keto-ish. Yeah. So opting whole foods and I'm starting one new recipe a week. Awesome. So bored with it. I really like that goal because it's not specific on weight or anything like that. It's more of, of um, it's more specific to just the type of foods that you're eating. And then two with the keto, you know, when we get super restrictive on keto, the body does some weird stuff, but the principles are there. And the principles being that we're eating less sugar, we're eating less refined carbs, and we're eating more foods such as proteins and fats that actually our body uses to help build up a lot of our systems. We need a lot of unsaturated fats, omega-3s uh, to just help with the processes of the body. So, I mean, where do you think this great hair comes from? I mean, it's all omega-3. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Peggy, I was just seeing who's well, listening. I have one main goal right now, and that's down to to, to track down the source of this pain I have in my leg so I can actually do more things because I was even saying to my husband the other day, we used to go out walking in the snow, you know, it didn't matter what time of year it was, we were outside walking all the time. And I haven't been able to do that. And so my goal this year is to be able to go and spend more time outside and to do more exercising once I get rid of this pain that I have. Good. I like that goal. Thank you. Lisa. Um, well, obviously I think, um, yeah, eating more whole foods and less prepackaged foods is, is good. So um, that's, a, that's a goal I'll certainly try. Less um, Pop-Tarts? Say what? Less Pop-Tarts. I hate pop Oh, gross. Those are <laughs> awful. Oh, I never like those. <laughs> All right. But um, I like number two, sit less, move more. Good. Because I basically all I ever do, I'd sit. <laughs> yeah. So I need to stop, you know, doing what I'm doing, get up and just like walk around a little bit. I just get so focused on work and, and just, you know, hunkering down in front of my computer and stuff. And I just get, just get stuck. And so after a while, I realized I've been stuck in the same position for, you know, an hour or two. And That's so, true. you know, just getting up and walking around would be you know, a goal just to get moving and uh, find a physical activity you like. I mean, for me, that's pretty much nothing. But um, I'm, you know, working on trying to be able to, um, to do more of that and move more and get more range of motion and everything. So those would be my, those would be my big ones. Yeah, I love that. And I agree. Uh, one thing I didn't touch on enough on that uh, move more goal is that it doesn't have to be overwhelming. Just taking, saying, hey, I'm just going to eat my lunch in five minutes. I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes just going for a light walk. That's mm -hmm. already moving more. So mm -hmm. just finding a, a little structure that you can add each day, then it builds on itself. If you walked 30 minutes, the five days that you're at work, I mean, that's 150 minutes in the week that you've increased your activity level. Yeah. So, or you can chase your cats. Uh, yeah that well the cat i know the cats need exercise so do i so i'll tr I try to move around while i'm move, making them move around so we can maybe both uh uh we can all get a uh, better shape uh, sounds great uh C cindy what do you got uh well my goal is just to try and read more so that i'm not looking at my phone or looking at tv or or things like that so less screen time is probably my my goal for this year, Good. Um, but to actually use it in production of reading. <laughs> Good. I like that. Uh, Lori. Okay. Um, I was going to go sit less, move more, but I, I think mostly I just need to get outside. I'm scared I'm going to fall down. It's slippery out here. I already fell once this winter and I was hurting for three weeks. Yeah. But um, I, that's the only way I know to be walking around is to go outside. So I'm going to yeah. try to um, 
be more comfortable. We do plow, plow our road, but it is a hill. So, I mean, it's just slippery all the time. I even walk in on flat, I feel uncomfortable. Well, but, let, me, um, let me encourage you on this. I completely agree. I love the, um, I, the get outside more. And it sounds like fear is the biggest reason and the fear of getting injured. So how about this? I'll look on Amazon. I, there's um, the little shoe uh, yeah. spikes that go right over the top of your shoes. And I it has think little... I have a pair. I've got to find them. Yeah. And I think if you grab those, you're going to get all the traction. Even if you're on ice downhill, it's going to grip into it. And you're okay. not going to have the slime slip effect because what you're saying is, is no different than anybody. I don't want to go out and slip and, and land on my back. Um, but if it's a real concern for you, let's, let's yeah. change that because okay. getting outside is powerful. So I've forgotten about those. I, I know they're here somewhere. <laughs> um, okay. And I've never really wanted to meditate. Maybe it's because of what you said. So I think I'll try to meditate. Okay. That's a good one too. And also I want to, well, I have plenty of physical activities I enjoy. I just need to have someone to enjoy them because it's like pickleball or racquetball. So yeah. Jill, are you still playing pickleball? I haven't played pickleball for a year. I need, that's one of the things I need to get back into. Well, the hopefully we can get together. The me time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, let's go right to Jill. What do you got, Jill, so far that stands out on those top uh, 13? Well, I was just going to say basically kind of more me time uh, to where I can do like go play pickleball or I don't know. I just find that I'm running around doing other people's schedules and things like that and not getting as much activity as I'd, I'd like. I find I sit more, even coaching. I mean, that's not a ton of activity right. uh, as much as I would like, but. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Increase more. Good, thank you. Kelly. Hey, well, my phone's being noisy, sorry. Um, I don't do bad in the whole food thing, but I think that I should do more. So I think I'll go home and shoot a deer and I'll share it with you. Well, then you're, you're, you're getting outside, you're getting yeah. more active, you're eating whole foods, you're, you're spending less time with convenience foods. I mean, I, I really like this idea. Yeah, yeah, you can help me skin it this afternoon. Are, are you going to uh, archery or rifle? No, I'll have to do rifle. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, I'll yeah. watch you this afternoon. Okay. Um, <laughs> and as always, I need to be more active. It's easy for me to um, sit down when I shouldn't, you know? Okay. And be well, you know, I really should go outside more too because it's really neat out there and I have a tendency to not want to be cold or whatever. So. Well, well, we'll put spike strips on the recliner. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Kathy, you. Kathy, what do you got? Well, um, the big thing, I, I've meditated before and I kind of haven't done it for a while. So I think that's something I really need to do because I do not like to sit without the television on or the radio on or something and just kind of have busy thoughts and I don't I hate going shopping so, yeah. <laughs> so I have to make myself going and I I I'm very much whole food oriented I don't have a lot of packaged foods in the house at all but Good. but it's just sometimes it gets pretty slim because I just haven't been to the store so Good. I have to kind of because I just hate going to the store so okay. that's not my thing but but meditation is a big one I want I I hadn't thought about that for this year and I was that's a really 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 good idea for me I think good well, thank you for sharing. I got about uh, nine more of these and then we'll break out of here. So I'll try and go through these a little, a, a little quicker. Otherwise we're going to get skimped on time. So uh, number 14, uh, use healthier health, household products. So it's obvious that what you put into your body can significantly impact your health, but what you choose to put onto your body and what products you use in your home also matters as well. So making a resolution to purchase more natural beauty products, um, household cleaners, laundry detergents, personal care items can also create a healthier environment for yourself and your family as well. So number 14, use healthier household products. 15, add more produce to your diet. This will go into our nutritional talk in the future that really, really goes into um, fiber. 
And I touched on it before, before about uh, soluble and insoluble fiber, and you need both of these. And a lot of your vegetables have the soluble and insoluble fiber already in them. So by eating that whole food, by eating more produce, it really helps with the whole processes of the body, the gut biome that needs that fiber to chew on, to create a nice layer of protection around the intestine. So it becomes more regular with your bowels, but also prevents the absorption of a lot of the um, sugars that your body really doesn't need. So again, that's that's coming in the future, but add more produce to your diet will, will help with your overall health because you're getting natural antioxidants, fibers, and, and other vitamins and minerals just pure right into your body. Number 16, uh, Cindy and Peggy, you guys just plug your ears for a minute. Number 16, cut back on alcohol. So e even though alcohol can fit into a, a, a healthy diet, um, it can also inhibit your overall health as well. So drinking too frequently or too much can help prevent some of your health wellness goals. Now, remember that alcohol counts as a calorie, but your body cannot break down alcohol and use it for energy. So why do you get cirrhosis of the liver? Because your body cannot use alcohol and metabolize it. So what happens is it goes to your liver, your, your liver breaks it down, it cannot metabolize it. So what does it do? It converts it to fat. And where does it put it? around your liver. So what if, in time, if you drink way too much, you get fatty liver disease, which then converts into cirrhosis. So just know that alcohol should be used in moderation because it, it is not a source of energy. Your body can't break it down and it truly is a poison because your body can't use it for energy. It can't rid the excess of it. So overall, um, just know that there's also some, some, some issues with alcohol where it can disturb your sleep. It can uh, turn you into a, 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 a terminator and different things like that. But just know that cutting back on, on alcohol can be a goal that you can accomplish. That doesn't mean you have to stop, but you can substitute it for other things. You can start um, using sparkling water. You can uh, uh, try different infused drinks instead of uh, solely going to... to um, your wine of choice. Anyways, number 17, be more present. So again, uh, research, research has shown that being more present will improve your life satisfaction. So again, this is a goal of mine. This dove, dovetails into my sleep. I found before that uh, later at the night, even though I was home and I'm there with my kids and my family, but I'm not present because I'm too tired. So or I'm thinking about work. I'm thinking about, oh, well, tomorrow we're going to do this. And if I add this and I can, okay, let's build this. So one of my goals is to be compartmentalized um, to when I'm at work, I'm doing work. When I'm at home, I'm only at home. When I'm, uh, I'm getting the sleep that I need so that I can be complete in my life. So being more present has shown an improvement in life satisfaction. It also decreases negative thoughts. So overall, it improves your psychological health. So one of your resolutions can be to be more present, which is overall, be more mindful. Be more mindful of what you're doing. Who are you with? Are you devoting all your time to them? How many times have you been around somebody and you're talking with them? Uh-huh. But you're also multitasking. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you're on your phone. Yeah, you bet. And then later it's, hey, why didn't you do what I asked you to do? You never asked me. When was that? I was just told you like an hour ago. So be more present with those people and your relationships will, will blossom as well. Number 18, which some of you will love this, take a vacation. Taking a vacation, even a short one, can have a significant and immediate positive effect on your stress levels and enhance your well-being. So in the new year, make a resolution, and I'm already commanding Jill to do this one. Disney World, baby, that's where it's at. New Year's resolution should be to take a vacation with your friends or your family members, or possibly on your own. So whether you travel to an area you've always wanted to visit or simply just to have a, a short vacation that's close, taking some of that time to rest, relax, and reset the mind can be one of the best things that you do for your health. So number 18, take a, take a vacation. Number 19, 
try a new hobby. So it's common for adults to, to let once loved hobbies just fall by the wayside and, and, and uh, go away and they don't continue them. So for myself, I used to tie flies I, I fly from fly fishing. And over the years, I've gotten hugely away from it. And um, it's not something that, that's a part of me anymore. And it kind of frustrates me. So now that I got my little guy that's, that's growing up, he's starting to fish more. He's starting to learn how to fly fish. I can see that as a hobby that we can start getting back into of, of tying flies. So we all have some type of hobby that we used to, to partake in that we're not anymore. Number 19 for a New Year's resolution that you can actually keep. Try a new hobby or, or come back to one that you've done in the past. Number 20, which is a great one, stop negative body talk. Talking negatively about your body can lead to feelings of body shame. In fact, research showing that engaging in and hearing negative body talk is associated with higher levels of body dissatisfaction and decreased self-esteem in both women and men. So make a healthy New Year's resolution to engage in positive self-talk regularly and reduce negative body talk. This may not only help improve your relationship with your own body, but also encourage others to stop negatively talking about themselves. This is one that, that we tend to do often is, is talk negatively about our own features and things that we don't like and wish we didn't have. That just creates overall a negative mindset of, of who we see ourselves are, which again, I mentioned before with the meditation, the most dangerous things that can be that that can be put into your head actually can originate from your head so how you talk to yourself matters number 21 visit your doctor so this is a goal that you can obtain getting examined regularly by your healthcare practitioner is important for many reasons having regular blood work and necessary screening can help spot potential problems before they turn into something more serious so uh uh Put, put your doctor through the paces to have a regular physical, regular follow-up that can screen a lot of the issues because as we age, we know that there are certain ages where we, certain problems become more prevalent. So getting on top of those and correcting them is way easier than having a disease manifest and then you have to fight the disease. So number 21, this is something that we can obtain. Visit your doctor, get on the schedule, make it regular. Number 22, this is something that we can obtain as well. Take care of your teeth. Maintaining your oral health is a New Year's resolution uh, that, that can be used to sustain your whole life. Brushing and flossing your teeth regularly can help prevent a lot of oral conditions like gum disease and bad breath. But what's more, some research suggests that gum disease can be associated with more serious health problems, such as Alzheimer's, heart disease, so by making oral care more important, it can overall improve your health. So not just brushing and flossing, but uh, doing regular checkups with your dentist, regular cleanings twice a year can help boost your health. So this is something that you can obtain as well. And number 23, the last one I have for you is create a sustainable nourishing diet. Now this dovetails with a lot of the things that we've talked about from whole foods, staying out of... Um, uh, convenience foods, uh, going to the grocery store more often, but you might be making a, a, a resolution to eat healthier, to lose weight year after year, because you're prioritizing short-term changes over long-term health benefits. So instead of making a plan to follow another restrictive diet or a fad diet, make a resolution to break the dieting cycle and create a sustainable, nourishing eating pattern that works specifically for you. So when Linda mentioned she's doing a modified keto, great. If that's a nourishing, sustainable eating pattern that works for you, bam, perfect. What works for you, somebody else might want to do Mediterranean or uh, uh, intermittent fasting. It doesn't even have to be called anything, but uh, a, a sustainable plan that works for you is really what you're looking for. That's healthy overall. So again, Minimizing the sugary drinks, a lot of the sugary uh, products, the heavily processed foods should be, should be part of that goal as well. But the, the biggest uh, key is developing that eating pattern. So overall, that takes the top 23. There's too many of them there for me to recap, but we'll just go from the, the top. Anything else overall you can just touch on other than the ones that you talked about before that kind of touched on you? 
you can either hit the last 10 that I did or just your thoughts overall on resolutions. So we'll start with Linda. What's your biggest takeaway from, from those today? You're still muted right now. There we go. Basically, you hit on a lot of the things that I want to work on, which is around eating and getting rid of the sugar, uh, which I've been working on the last year. Um, I think that one of the ones I need to work on more is stopping negative body talk. Um, it's a bad habit. I am kind of a caretaker person, even in what I do for a living. And so it makes me happy to take care of everybody else. And then I feel guilty when I spend that time. Yeah. I just got a book that is the high five habit. Yeah, the high five habit that someone recommended to me. And I'm only into it a little bit, but again, it's, it's more taking control of your life by high-fiving yourself and, you know, focusing on the good things about you and not the bad. So that's yeah. something that I really will work on this year. Good. I really like that. And thanks for the book recommendation. I'd like to know if it's a worthy read. So when you get done with it, if you really like it, that's something because again, uh, one of my resolutions besides the other ones is to, to read 12 books this year. So I've got already six picked out. I want to hit one per month. So that could be number seven for me if you think it's, if okay. it's uh, worthy. So thank you. Um, but yeah, you're right. A lot of times we create negative self-talk that just, it becomes a part of who we are. We, we keep saying these same mantras and then we start believing them. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I could never do that because I'm not that kind of person. And it just creates this negative cycle that leads to um, unhappiness, truly. So, yeah. Thank you for the, the comment and the recommendation there. Lisa. Um, well, yeah, the same kind of similar to what I said before, uh, focus on uh, moving around more and just getting more activity mm -hmm. um, because I, I don't eat a lot of really bad foods. Um, Although I do try to limit things like fast food. <laughs> I try to limit fast food to about twice a week and, you know, drive up window, whatever. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lure. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, it's hard to not do, oh, yeah. but I try to eat, uh, you know, healthier foods at home and then, um, you know, go, go to my office and, you know, try not to snack. I, I don't usually bring snacks or anything to me with me to the office. If I'm working at home, it's more of a, it's more of a temptation to come up to the kitchen and there's some chips, you know, and crackers like, oh, I need a little snack and try to eat something. You try to not eat it or you try to eat something healthier like almonds. Almonds are yeah. kind of a nice little snack and they're good for you. But potato chips are kind of like, oh, they're there and I, like, I want to eat them. So, so definitely, um, you know, cutting down on the bad foods and then moving more and of course doing more of my routines, my exercises that you keep sending me <laughs> that I'm, you know, trying to do. And, you know, it's either in the morning or in the evening. And then I, you know, I get to the evening. I'm like, oh no, I haven't done my workout. It's too late. I'm too tired. So, you know, <laughs> that's, you know, try to be, I guess, overall, I don't know, maybe you didn't give us one of, that says, try to be more organized. <laughs> and you know, focus on what you're trying to accomplish every day, and then you know, go through the list every day at the end of the day and, and do it. So that that would be definitely a big one for me. Well, see, I only made a list of the ones that you can accomplish. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Everything else is just a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. You're you're right on on a couple couple areas there, and you know. I wouldn't beat yourself up on, on making sure that you hit every workout again, to me, it's, it's about the habit. If you set the time ahead of time and you just make it consistent, it'll run itself. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll do it overall. So, um, the, the key is too, with the resolutions, you're just really looking for ways that you can improve your life. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you can pick out two or three and just make it a, a, a priority and be mindful of it, it's, mm -hmm. it, it goes a long way. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Peggy. Um, yeah, well, I guess for me, it would be, um, 
the negative body talk also. I think that I've struggled with that most of my whole life actually. And um, so that's a good one. And um, I think that maybe we should start a, a pickleball lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Cause well, I, hey. I started interested in learning how to play that. Well, I will uh, put on the replay that I have, uh, I made a, a webpage link to our site on, um, I think it's the top five pickleball injuries and how to prevent them, if I remember right. So I'll, I'll add that in there and you guys can take a little look at the pickleball link. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys, if you guys are interested, I, I have some contacts that are doing pickleball that we're setting up over at the college and different things like that. So we'll just sponsor you. Yeah. So, Cindy, what do you got? I can't hear you. I have to unmute real quick. Hit the wrong button. There you go. Uh, probably just eating um, better. It's not that we do fast food much, but we don't do a huge variety. Yeah. So I... I definitely can do better at that. And uh, I know I'll be getting out more now that the neighborhood dog is here. So <laughs> the shared dog, I should call him. <laughs> well, what I was going to touch on with Lisa was talking about too, because she mentions, you know, hey, I'll hit the fast food. I'll do this. You know, cooking at home can be a pain in the ass. I mean, that's what happens is that it takes time and it takes effort. And then it takes the mental thought because you're like already tired. It's at, you're going home. You're like, what am I going to make for dinner? And I have to make enough for the whole family. And then it's, so then you get there and instead of being able to just say, I'm going to go pick this up and come home and everybody eats and then I can hang out. Now it's okay. I got to prepare it and then I got to cook it and then I got to clean it all up. So now that's another hour, hour and a half of just doing something that you could drive by and grab on the while you're surfing on your phone waiting for them to make it it uh, the convenience is absolutely there so it's part of that is fighting against it and one way that you can you can possibly fight against it is take the people that are in your home and have them assist with you and and use that time as as the well it's more of communication time so don't say it as well you have to make this for me no just come sit up at the table because i just want to talk with you Oh, while you're there, we just cut that up. I just need you to do this real quick. And then now you're getting a two for one. You're making a meal, but it's also creating a sense of community and you can learn about the people that are in your house and how their day went. Because at some point you're probably asking that anyway. So other than Cindy. If, if, well, you know, if you could get off a little earlier so that, <laughs> you know, by the time we cooked it, it would be too late yeah. to eat, you know, so it has to get done before he gets home. So, um, there's that, but that's not a good excuse to not have more variety and not get stuck okay. in her. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lori. So I just want to comment on that. Stop the negative body talk. Yeah. Um, when I hear that, I think you're speaking out loud, but I think your thoughts are more negative than anything else. So yeah. I would say also stop your negative body thoughts. Yeah. And by doing that, you can do an affirmation daily. And I know you can get online and find a whole group of them. And you look in the mirror and you tell yourself you're doing good today, you look good today, or whatever you might need. And I think that is beneficial for a lot of people. Yeah. But um, then I also wanted to say that be more present. Um, I feel I am, but I also feel I can always improve. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Jill. Well, uh, you keep pounding me over Disney World, so I probably have to get that going at some point. I'm going to have to work more hours so I can afford it. It's part of the big scheme. It's part of the big scheme. Yep. Yep. You oh, got we can start, we can start today. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> yep. Well, no, I, I think it, it's all good stuff you're talking about. And I think no matter who you are, you're always going to struggle with the um, negative thoughts and, and negative um, talking. Uh, that's just something that is the bad side of our human nature. So that's why these kinds of 4% clubs is good. So we can know that we're all on the same page and help each other out. Yeah. Speak nope. positively to each other because we already do it bad enough ourselves. So I, I hear you. I hear you. 
and I keep ribbing uh, Jill about mm-hmm. Disney World because we took our kids yeah, maybe five years ago and holy smokes, Disneyland, eh. Disney World, holy smokes, complete experience. Everything is catered to you. It's just uh, one of the best things you can do. I'd, I'd go back yearly if Jill paid for it. So <laughs> uh, Kathy, <laughs> Kathy <laughs> what do you got? Well, when you talked about more produce, I love fruit, but I'm, I don't have a big variety of vegetables. So that's one of my things I want to do is to actually do more of a variety of vegetables that, you know, the whole spectrum of colors and all those kind of things and do that more, more readily. And I think when I, you think you talk about uh, stop negative body, I also have to be able to accept where my body's at in this, this, this life I'm in, you know, yeah. and it, it's more of an accepting thing because um, some days it is really negative, but but to accept that and say, well, tomorrow will be better kind of thing is where I have to accept where my body's at today. Yeah. And that's really, really hard because sometimes I don't want to do what it's telling me to do. So yeah, that's really difficult. Yeah. I mean, you hit that on the head there. I mean, that's true. And it, what's really uh, interesting is how much that stop the negative body talk really stood out for everybody today. I mean, yeah. that's one that's yeah. that people keep going back to and like I, I mentioned early like on, Lori said it's very true with everybody. Yeah, it's just something we we have to keep working against. So, thank you, uh, Kelly. Round us out. I just need to go touch the wall, Rob. <laughs> That's right. I do. Yeah, touching the wall. I'll put paint on your hand. Yeah. Other than that, I'm I'm not too bad. I'd like to start writing in my journal more. Okay. Yeah. I like that too. So, well, overall team, I thought this was a good one today. I'd ha- I have to say it worked out really well. And I also wanted to give you guys a little heads up. New, addi- <laughs> new addition to the office, to the family. This is blue. Yes, little blue. So he just, we have a yellow lab that's going up on 14 this, uh, this April. So Kelly has his brother. So we, we bit the bullet and said, let's, uh, let's get a chocolate lab. And that way, maybe it'll create a little spunk in the old guys. And then two, we won't feel like we're replacing our other guy when, uh, when he eventually moves on. So, and he's been a good one. He's, he's been sleeping under the desk the whole time, haven't you? Hmm. Haven't you? <laughs> Kelly, so what's your dog's name? He and I. Now he's full energy. And they've they've uh, sent their old dog Finn to my house too most of the time. So they're just have an old folks home up there. Oh, it is a complete retirement home. He's so old that we feel guilty having him walk back across the field. I mean, they're like two old men just limping along the whole way over. It's like by the time they get there, they're exhausted. So yep, we've got the we've got the Kelly Lawson dog nursing home going on yeah my cat's 14 too <laughs> <laughs> yeah so all right team hey thanks for being a part of it i'll see you next week and uh if anybody wants to come see the dog let me know thank you all right see you next time team